So, Tony, uh, you know, for, for those who are Michigan Wolverines uh, watching, obviously it's Michigan Wolverines live. So, so we try to understand when we think of uh, teams to compare 2023 Washington to, it's very difficult to do that when you have a Big Ten schedule where it's very heavy on top the level Iowa. defenses, but then you have offenses that are struggling, right? Um, yeah. I had to go back to 2022 it's a, it's a Ohio flip. State. Yeah. Um, I had to go back to 2022 Ohio State. And Tony, what happened, as you probably remember, there's a thing called 2020, and Harbaugh won two games. And, I, re- uh, I remember. And, <laughs> you guys, and, you guys uh, forget, and, I'm from Michigan. So I'm watching this. <laughs> People think of me as the USD person, but I'm from Michigan. I'm watching this. I'm like, oh, that was not good. And, and he calls his brother. You know, he takes a 50% pay cut. He calls his brother and he says, you know, hey, can you help me out? Uh, you know, I can give one. And he says, I can give you Mike McDonald or I can, or I can give you Jesse Minner. Okay. I'm going to pick Mike McDonald. So Mike McDonald comes to Michigan and, uh, gets rid of the one trick pony, uh, Dr. Blitz. And it turns into a four, three multiple, uh, defense where it's a Raven style defense, um, that's built to beat a team like an Ohio state with a high octane pass, um, that's kind of like a hybrid what would that be like? pseudo area finding and having a terrible defense and then bringing someone in with a Harbaugh style defense who would do oh wait USC just did that okay sorry there it is there Go on. <laughs> yeah no I think, that, I think that's actually a pretty good analogy you know one of the differences though is that mm-hmm. Washington has probably no offense to Texas I don't think Washington has faced a team like Michigan yet I mean, USC Washington game, guys. You could take like seven on seven on zero. It was, you know, like a seven on seven. Well, imagine a seven on zero. Well, like z- two tackles in that whole game, I think that were ever that yeah. were made. Um, yeah, Washington had I don't know eight thousand yards of offense. Uh, Alex Grinch got fired the next day. Like it was, or day and a half later. No, it was the next day. It was the next day. It was the next morning. Uh, I mean, it was a sad display when USC played, but they've, you know, they've had these games back where they haven't played a great defense like yours. They've played great. They played offenses that were better than yours, um, but they have not played a defense like yours and they're not perfect. Um, However, they are enchanted. So I think much like TCU last year, they, they remind me a lot more than anything else of TCU last year where they have big plays, they're going to hit you with explosives. You know, uh, Adunze is going to do his thing. He, the, the other receivers are going to do their thing. Dylan Johnson, I don't, and I don't know if he's as, if he's hurt. I don't know what's going on with him. They've heard different things, but he's a great running back. So they have explosive plays they can make, uh, but they haven't played a defense like yours that can stop those explosive plays, as you've shown yeah. against Ohio State, I think as you showed against Alabama. Alabama. Um, you know, so the question is, do they have that magic pixie dust like TCU did? Because they've had it so far. I mean, I, I talked about a good friend of mine who four year letter winner and track from there. And every week he'd be like, we got lucky. We got lucky again. We got. And, you know, at a certain point, you're lucky 13 and out. You can pretty much like TCU last year. They so many games they should have. I mean, this Washington team should have lost to ASU, which yeah. I don't know if you guys know this. Washington hasn't won in the desert. Since 2001. Wow. 2001 is the last time they won in the desert, and they should have lost at home to Arizona. They're just, they are cursed against Arizona State. Um, yeah, we're talking like Pokemon, Tamagotchis. Oh, like on like some little <laughs> chain battery powered thing. You know, that's the <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, we're talking like the Clinton administration here is when they last won in the desert. So it's just a, you know, I guess, you know, I guess it would have been the first Bush administration. Yeah. The World Trade Center was probably still up. I don't know what date the game was, but it's just a different. So, you know, they should have lost ASU. If USC had made, I don't know, two tackles in the whole game, we might have won. There's a bunch of different games that they pro- they should have lost to Wazoo. They should have lost. A lot of people think they should have lost to Oregon twice. But they find a way to win. And those those teams, by the way, are dangerous. Those teams that just find a way to win. Like, like I haven't watched a Michigan game this year. I guess the Alabama game. The Alabama game is really the first one where I thought you guys had to find a way to win. 
because you've you right. you you have a great team, and so you've just kind of you know continued Bow to steamroll up. The, it wasn't no no games were like down to the wire. Like they had a bunch of games, so that for a team that's a that's it's both good or bad because it's a recipe for you know you could be you could be the team to hit them like Georgia hit TCU last year and be like okay you're you're all done with that Cinderella pixie dust or you know you could you could be like your game against TCU last year if they still have that magic enchantment it 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 could go either way um and we're going to dive into it uh in six i, I basically picked six different aspects um, kind of carving up the stats and looking at these teams. But I want to make one caveat before we do, we go through these six is that these are two diametrically opposed, basically team philosophies. So it's very tough because there's no control mechanism. There's no constant. Uh, Washington's a high, high octane passing offense. Michigan's a pound the rock, you know, old school bow eighties, like, you know, with some variations and some play action and things like that. But, you know, it does make it a bit more difficult, um, you know, to look at these two. But uh, so starting with coaching, um, and, you know, Jim Harbaugh, Kalen DeBoer, um, first of all, before I go into it, I, I, I do have to say Kalen DeBoer and the coaching job that he's done to turn around a dumpster fire program, four and eight program, and they've gone to 25 and two with a national title appearance. Um, that might be one of the most impressive coaching turnarounds I've ever seen. Um, it, there are very few like it that just happened that quickly and go to that level. Harbaugh kind of did it, but he went to 10 wins. He didn't go to the net. But you know, you know what Jen, what Jen Cohen said when she hired him? Yeah. So people don't know that, uh, people weren't really paying any attention because mm. Caitlin DeBoer got hired. I think the same day Lincoln Riley got hired. And so the me the media was was focused on that and and it was kind of the opposite because what Jen Cohen said for, she wanted for Washington she knew they needed a heavy rebuild and Jen Jen Cohen by who's she was the Washington AD she's now the USC AD and she is amazing um, but what she said is she wanted a coach who knew how to win as a head coach at all levels and if you look at Kalen DeBoer I mean he went back to, I don't even know some of the what are they like. NAIA division two school, you know, worked his way up, you know, at India and then took over for Tedford at Fresno at Fresno was just winning like crazy. I mean, went down to the Rose bowl and beat UCL beat UCLA and, and was just, and so Jen Cohen was like, I want a coach who's one who knows how to win. It reminds me a little bit of like Indiana's new hire with Signetti, you know, like get a coach who knows how to win at every level. And, you know, brought him in and he has just done amazing. So now again, Washington has Washington has every advantage in the world. It's just, it's just like Michigan. It's a very big ten. Starbucks school, like, money. All kinds of Boeing money. All kinds of money. Gold Washington has gold money. Uh, yeah. What Washington, I don't know if you guys know you know all the skyscrapers in Seattle? Washington owns a whole bunch of them because they're built on their old campus from when they moved at like the turn of the century and still own downtown Seattle. But like, like the university district or whatever in downtown Seattle isn't where the school is. It's where the school was. And now the school owns all that. It's like, you know, it's, it's like we're talking like like British, like Grosvenor money, you know, kind of a thing that that school has. So it's a it's a, it's a school that just has has every reason to win. And she helped, you know, kind of re-enable that with, with, with hiring him and the, the people they put in place, the team they put in place. They you know, got people from the transfer portal. Uh, and they did what they needed to do. So it's just Washington should win, and they are. But but Kalen DeBoer is, was also sort of like the perfect person for them. He kind of embodied that spirit of the school. Um, it reminds me a lot of kind of like how Pete Carroll. But you guys remember Pete Carroll like felt like USC, and I think Kalen DeBoer feels like Washington. Harbaugh feels like Michigan. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, people are saying in chat, well, actually, Harbaugh has this record and DeBoer has this record. I took out everything except for the school, the, the school that we're focusing on. And the reason is because Harbaugh's got NFL. He's got two, a, a couple other schools. DeBoer's got th technically three national championships at the NIAA. It's very tough to like do this. So I just stuck to the one school that each of them have been representing, um, you know, and, and done it that way. But they're both doing great, say, Tony. 
And, and you may call me a homer for, for giving Harbaugh the advantage on this. I mean, I'm from um, Michigan, but, so I'm not. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm giving this this on this number one advantage Harbaugh, sl- at least slightly. Um, and here's why. Uh, what we saw this season. Connor is, Stallions. No, I'm just kidding. Connor Stallions. I'm no, but kidding. Harbaugh was out for six games. And the team continued to win. Oh, not only did, not only did the team continue to win. Let me tell you what I think is the masterful coaching job here. They somehow had a coach suspended for half the season for two different yeah. cheating situations. Which I mean, in both of them, you clearly did. Like shame, shamefully did. You did both of them, and somehow made yourselves the victim to where the Michigan is like the underdog. Oh, we're we're against the world. I'm like, you're not against the world. Like what a brilliant coaching job. Really a motivation job. America's, America's team. team. By what metric? I don't know, but it worked. Like, you know, get that, that that is a there is a masterful coaching job there. There's a, a unified team there. You know, they're all about it. I mean, the other thing, one of the things I love, and I don't know, is this a new thing in Michigan? I don't know. They call themselves, I don't know, team 140, whatever they are. What what, what number are they this year? The 140th team, 145th team. They're President Ono calls them that. There. Yeah, they all call it. It's, but they're like they're very unified in the idea of being a Michigan team. And so, you know, I look at that and and I'm like, this is a, this is a team that very what they need to do. 144. That's 140. what they are. OK. Yeah. But yeah. But I mean, that's like a really to me, that's a really cool thing, because that's like a t- the team doing that and the team calling themselves that, which they do. They're recognizing their place in Michigan history. Absolutely. Uh, we do have our first super chat. Thank you to Ryan for your 999 super chat. Go blue, get the job done, bring the pack in with a win. Okay. I like it. There you go. Um, hey, the big so ten number one, either way. Exactly. It's either current big 10 or future big 10. Either way, the two are it's all big 10. You know, going to rematch in the big 10. As I told, as I told somebody today who was mouthing off of me, I said, no, the Pac-12 is it's now down with a Titanic sub, imploded and gone. It's Big Ten from here on out. Absolutely. Um, we're gonna yeah, the people in chat, we're gonna stay away from uh, talking about the the we, we've talked about the the stallions thing like for hours and hours and hours and hours. Oh, sorry, and hours. I wasn't trying to I wasn't trying to go there. Yeah, well, I'm just talking about all the chat stuff going on. I mean, we can debate that we could debate that for for hours. Um but uh, but the quarterback battle. So you know, I think I think on first glance, people who may not be as ingrained in this would say, "Oh, well, Michael Penix. He's thrown for a hundred bazillion yards. He's he's the definitive uh, uh, you know advantage here." But you look at JJ McCarthy, and again, this is where the systematic differences come into play. Uh, Penix doesn't have the same running game. Uh, the, and the same offensive philosophy, it's a lot on him, right? He has three exceptional wide receivers. Um, he's got to throw a lot of yards because his, his he's got, I, I believe it's the hundredth running offense in the country. So when, when you have the hundredth running offense in the country, you've got to throw a lot. Who, by the way, had one guy run for 250 yards against USC. Well, so so then, if you had to tackle, Grinch. they'd probably be the 120th. That's you definitely right. Um, they'd be the 120th. But, so so these two, obviously, yeah, I I will give Penix every kudos for his passing ability. Some of the passes that he made against Texas, some of them were against wide open receivers, but some of them were tight windows, um, well defended, and he still found a way to get it in. Um, we played him uh, in 2020. We're bringing back 2020 again. Uh, when he was at Indiana, he he did, I believe it was 350 and three touchdowns against Michigan and Don Brown's final year. And so, um, you know, this is the second matchup, Penix versus Michigan. Um, and his QBR is is decent, uh, sixth in the country, 35 touchdowns is is awesome. But but I want to talk about McCarthy's strengths too. So JJ McCarthy. Keep in mind, he was injured for four games, right? So he was working through an injury. 
Um, he's he's dealing with a much more run heavy offense, but he can run the ball. He's got that dual threat capability, and he did go for uh, twenty eight hundred plus yards. He did go for twenty two touchdowns, uh, four picks, and because of the ability that he has, that's why he's third in the country for QBR eighty nine point five. Um, he has the ability to run when he needs to, to, um, to make athletic plays that no other Michigan quarterback I've ever seen has made, uh, the flea flicker in the Alabama game when he caught the ball with one hand and then quickly had to adjust before getting trucked to then chuck it over to Roman Wilson. Uh, literally if he wasn't one of the most athletic quarterbacks I've, I've ever seen, that was Mahomes. That was a Patrick Mahomes-esque, very few quarterbacks can do it. Um, I'm calling this a push. I'm calling this a draw. I think they both have exceptional talents in different areas, and they're both going to have themselves one hell of a game. Uh, what, what's your take on the, the, the QBs? So, I, I mean, I think Michael Penix is more talented, just from a pure... I mean, Mike, Michael Penix is going to have a longer career on Sundays, probably, but... Mm-hmm. But that's not everything it's about. So, you know, I mean, I, I would I would say I would give the you know pure quarterback advantage to Michael Penix, but it's about running the ball. It's going to be about running the ball, and it's going to be about can you complete those passes? Can you get those balls that the ball to those receivers? How covered are those receivers? How good is the Michigan defense going to be? I mean, remember, one of the things that Michael Michael Penix played against some awful defenses. He played mm-hmm. against some good defenses too. I mean, we, the the pack is not the you know mid two thousands Big Twelve, you know where you had those like every game was forty eight to forty eight or whatever. But he played against some good defenses, but I don't think he's really played against a defense on the caliber of Michigan yet. And so you know the, when we think about like yeah, I give the quarterback advantage to Washington, but I don't necessarily give the whole I don't give the whole team advantage to Washington. Yeah, that's that's a fair take. Um... Yeah, and as as we've said, the the only way to to win a national championship, Mark Rogers and I have talked about it on Mission Wolverines Live before. You need to have good quarterback play. Penix and, and McCarthy, and both, I think both, and they both, both have elite them. quarterback play. I would say, yeah, like I w- I would um, say JJ JJ is a J. I mean JJ is going to play on Sunday. It just, he just you know he may not play as many years or start as much, but he he will he will have a great successful. I mean, again. These are these are great teams and great players. I think they're gonna we're gonna have a great game. Absolutely. Um, so the next is kind of uh, what we're gonna do now. These next couple uh, offense, defense, special teams. We're gonna start with overall each one, and then we're actually gonna look at the matchups against each other in terms of Washington's offense versus Michigan's defense, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna carve this up and look at the pro football focus ratings uh, for each piece. So. Um, offense. I was actually surprised Michigan was this highly ranked. Uh, I, you know, you think of Michigan's offense, you think of run the ball, you think of, uh, you know, light passing, um, but they're up there and they've, they've, uh, they've had some dynamic plays this season, uh, with play action, with rollouts. Uh, but you know, Washington, as I expected, uh, is, is a bit higher third, Um, And this also does speak to Michael Penix because to have the hundredth rushing offense in the country and to still come up third in pro football focus is extremely impressive. And I think that that's why we've got to really watch out uh, for, for Michael Penix. So advantage Washington there, uh, Tony. I I would agree with you, but I would also add two, two caveats to this. And I don't want to sound bad in both of these. Um, And I'm including my beloved alma mater in one of them. Michigan played a lousy schedule of a lot of bad teams. So I think a little bit of what we think about in, in terms of Michigan's offense, maybe sometimes being a little more boring or run the ball. It's because they didn't have to, they were stomping on teams. And when you stomp on teams, you don't have to make heroic quarterback plays because you're winning, you know, 48 to 10. And so there were a lot of games where I think like, it's not that Michigan couldn't be more high flying but they didn't have to be and so i kind of give i kind of think that michigan in some in some ways may this is going to sound really stupid for me to say but i I think it's true in some ways i think their stats may be a little padded but i think their capabilities are underestimated because i think they can do more than they're getting credit for by some people 
Yeah. Uh, I, I, I would, the, the only thing I would say is like, I don't think necessarily that Washington played a murderer's row either. Well, no, well that's why, that's um, what I was just about to get to. Washington's <laughs> offense is padded by playing some atrocious defenses as well. Right. You know, just covering no one. I mean, the, and, and Michael Penix, great, great quarterback. I mean, he is exceptionally talented, but I mean, let's just pick on that SC game where like zero tackles were made. If we were playing that game still, it would be a hundred, hundred, eleven billion to eleven billion and seven. So, you know, it was just those, those are, I think that both of those numbers in some ways are padded by bad defenses, but that is not shorting their capabilities. Both for both, for both teams. Because I think they, they, they both kind of, again, Washington kind of had it because they were playing bad defenses. Michigan, I think, had it because, you know, they were just up a lot. And so, you know, can JJ, I think JJ can make plays. He just a lot of times hasn't had to. That's a, and that's a good, that's a good, that's a good problem yeah. to have. Yeah. You, because, you know, Penn State, uh, there were two attempts at passing. They did an RPO and he decided to run it. And then the other one got called back. So then they wound up just uh, every recorded play was a run. Um, yeah. So if you don't they want, have to do it, I mean, that's the not? thing is, you know, it's it's not that they can't. It's that I think sometimes they haven't had to. Um, real quick, two shout outs. Uh, this is my mother uh, in chat here. So she uh, she uh, sit, yep, Lady Lake Music, uh, who also uh, helped us get our intro song. Uh, so David Martinez. Your intro song is good. Uh, thanks. Um, so David Martinez uh, donated our intro song, uh, which was very exciting. Um, and Rob, who also is part of uh, the Lady Lake uh, PR kind of world, is also here. Uh, so Rob is uh, is opening up a sports store, actually. So, uh, so cool. it's very exciting. Nice. Uh, so very cool there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here. Um, so we're here's the uh oh moment for Washington. Um, so we've pro football focus defense now, uh, Michigan number one versus Washington 37. And if you look at ESPN, FBI, it's, a, it's 40 something. Um, this is where, and you saw it in the Texas game, uh, right in the, in the playoff game, um, Texas like pounded the rock down their throat. They passed pretty much at will. Um, and they almost won that game. And if it wasn't for, you know, that last play not happening, Texas would be here, not, not Washington. So, um, well, did, you know, I, the, I heard a rumor. The, I didn't, they, didn't they turn the last two minutes over to Cristobal to call the plays that it's, it's very possible. That's what that's I heard what happened. Happened. That's they, very were possible. Like, they were Cristobaling. They were Cristobaling that too much Oregon, Oregon somehow got that Cristobal juice into their the juju into the Washington. No, I think, I think you're absolutely right in here. Michigan has a tremendous defense. Big advantage, big, big advantage, of Michigan. Washington's defense has has survived on a. I don't want to even want to call it a bend, don't break, break less than the other team. You know, I mean that, that that's kind of what they've done uh, a lot this season. They again found a way to win. Uh, I mean, they found a way to stop Bo Nix just enough to hit a field goal to win right. three times. Three times, by the way, you know, last year and through this year. Three times they've beaten Bo Nix by a field goal. And so, you know, that's the kind of thing where uh, now Michigan, Michigan, I don't think has done that. Michigan just stops people. And, and that's, and again, that's the kind of thing, you know, could Washington hang, can they hang in enough? Yeah, maybe. Will they? I don't know if I'd bet on that. Yeah, whether you look at the the interior D line, you look at uh, Michigan with uh, with Chris Jenkins, uh, you look at um, Mike Morris, you look at uh, the secondary and the safeties. Uh, Will Johnson being able to match up against Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, and actually pick like get a pick off of Marvin Harrison Jr. going up one on one against each other. Um, that's incredible. And that, and so yes, Washington has three and get, give them all their kudos, three exceptional top NFL level receivers, but, but it's not like Michigan hasn't faced maybe the best in football. Um, so there's the, the fact that all of that kind of factors in, I think to the, uh, the number one ranking there and Washington, it just, 
Michigan could really have a field day. As long as JJ, you know, stays disciplined, um, you know, Michigan would really have a field day on Washington's defense. They they could. Um, but you know, again, are they gonna have the pixie dust or not? Nick, I think Nick has a great point here, by the way. Nick. Thank you for coming by and contributing. Uh, a huge question is whether Washington's O-line can hold up for four quarters. I actually think they can. Um, no, no one has been able to all year against Michigan, largely because it's really difficult when you have tremendous depth as they have on the D-line. This is a Washington's O-line is legit. I will say that. They are. Um. Yeah, but so is Michigan, and so is Michigan's D line. That's why it's going to be really yeah. interesting to see. Yeah, 